So anyway, so one of the things we I would I always like to emphasize is that the notion of uniform bound actually uniform boundedness the way it's defined here does not imply stability or stability doesn't imply this in either direction. Okay, um, we'll talk about the linear system matter later. Okay, let's not get into that now because I want to move forward a little bit. Okay, all right, uniform stability. The only difference, see now that you understood stability, hopefully well enough. The other notions are relatively easier to follow actually. Yeah. So uniform stability, all you do is you change this part. The initial dependence, uh, the initial time dependence of delta goes away. That is what is uniform stability. So whenever uh, in all these stability notions we talk about uniformity, it is somehow uniformity with respect to time. Okay. So here all that happens is the initial time dependence vanishes. That is all. Okay? And you can of course have, so it is obviously a stronger property. Yeah, it is a stronger property. Okay. Um, and we say that the equilibrium is unstable if it is neither stable nor uniformly stable. Okay. If you have neither of these properties then it is unstable. Okay. So one of the first exercise that I mention here is of a Van der Paul oscillator. Right? It is one of the most popular nonlinear systems. It is being used to model uh, you know uh, biorhythms, heartbeats and so on. How the rhythmic how a lot of rhythmic things work why because the system exhibits something like a what is called a limit cycle behavior yeah which means that the trajectories sort of you know get into this cyclic behavior in state space okay so that is the same state is achieved after a certain time some kind of a periodicity yeah just like you have biorhythms heartbeat and so on so van der Paul oscillator is a very popular system for nonlinear dynamics studies yeah what I want you to do is, so this is the dynamics of the system, right? this is the actual equation of the system. What I will like you to do is tell me something about stability, uniform stability or instability of the origin. Okay? You do not need to do any analysis. I just want you to draw, plot it in a computer for different initial conditions, make the trajectories of the system in state space. Yeah. What does the state space mean? In this case, there are two states x and x dot, correct? The two dimensional system, so two states x and x dot. So, I want you to plot x and x dot, x versus x dot for different initial conditions, for different mu and just look at the plots and tell me whether it is stable or not because all, all you need to do is draw epsilon ball and delta ball, right? For any epsilon ball, can you get a delta ball, okay? So, all I want you to do is make plots for different initial conditions x, x dot. Okay, so start here and do see what happens. Yeah, and for different values of mu, you can choose some range of mu. Okay, and then you I just want you to comment if origin is uh, so I will say specifically. Yeah, notice that origin is an equilibrium by the way. Yeah, origin means x equal to 0, x dot equal to 0. Yeah, it is an equilibrium. Yeah. Because if x is 0 and x dot is 0, then x double dot is 0. Huh? It is an equilibrium, valid equilibrium. So, I just want you to comment by looking at the pictures. Huh? No analysis, nothing is required. Huh? The analysis is hard because uh, without solving it, how will you analyze? Alright. Okay. Now, we go to a very fun example. Okay. This is a example from Vidya Sagar's book. Very, very nicely illustrates the notions of stability and uniform stability. Okay. Of course, is not example is not by Vidya Sagar, it is in Vidya Sagar's book, but it is by some other uh, control applied mathematician and uh, very, very nice. Okay. Because why is it nice? Because it is easy to solve. So, you can actually look at the system solutions and get a very good feel for whether it is stable, unstable and all that. Okay. What is the system? This. Very easy x dot is 6 t sin t minus twice t times x. Okay. You know that this is very easy to solve right? because all I have to do is take this here and integrate this right hand side with respect to time yeah, and that is it. I mean so, so the solutions actually turn out to be this, this guy. Yeah. Not difficult to see that this is the solution because if I take derivative of this, yeah, you will get 6 t sin t and the derivative of this is 2 t. 
correct and then this is just the corresponding initial time terms exact same terms with opposite sign corresponding to initial time so it's just the definite integral okay everybody is clear that this solution is sort of evident yeah okay excellent and the exponential comes because uh, you have x dot divided by x yeah logarithmic so it's a linear system all linear systems have solutions which have exponentials okay nice and this is xt0 initial condition so you see all our actors are in the play yeah you have the initial time you have the initial state you have time you have the state x basically is the solution so we have everything that we need here now once i if i fix a particular t0 so for a fixed t0 uh, i'll just denote this as some gamma yeah the exponential of minus 6 sin t0 plus 6 t0 cos t0 plus t0 square i denote that as a gamma okay because once i fix t0 this is a constant okay so that i can just look at the function of time then this is okay okay all right okay first thing to note is that so what do we have to do we obviously have to find a given an epsilon find a delta right this is our job yeah this is what we are trying to do here hmm? so before getting to that i want to sort of understand this function if you look at this function this is true for this function that 60 si 6 sin t minus 60 cos t minus t square has to be negative for some large time okay why ha huh? t squared quadratic dominates yeah everything else is linear yeah whatever you do it doesn't matter yeah the quadratic will dominate yeah the negative quadratic will start to dominate beyond a certain point yeah so the plot might look something like this that you have on the left yeah picture looks something like this so the good thing is it's a first of all it's a nice smooth function first of all yeah smooth continuous everything right this function inside the exponential is smooth yeah very good function right so it is smoothly changing so it's not like suddenly it can have a jump and it go to infinity and come back or do something funny like that no right so it's a nice function and i know that it comes it becomes negative after a certain point even if it started positive all right so i'm guaranteed to have an upper bound m to this function okay and this upper bound will be between initial time and this finite capital t make sense yes yeah just look at the picture this picture is very very illustrative of this i mean again picture the real plot may be different there may be oscillations and all that given that there is sinusoids but more or less the idea is if the function is going to hit a negative value beyond a certain point so it's going to become negative beyond this point ha huh? here it can only have limited exploration right by smoothness of functions and you know uh, what is it uh, central value theorem and all that stuff. yeah yeah by all the nice results that you have for smooth functions if it's positive for only a finite time it can only have finite exploration on the y axis can't just go to infinity and come back okay excellent great so what is this i define m as exactly this the supremum from the, between this time of this function okay which is finite by continuity okay so continuity smoothness gives us all these very very nice results yeah i don't have to you know bang my head so if i if you give me an epsilon what will i choose my delta as i will choose my delta as epsilon over gamma e to the power m why we will see very shortly yeah remember this i choose delta as epsilon over gamma e to the power m so i have repeated this here but remember keep this in your mind that gamma depends on t0 hmm? so you ask me how the delta depends on t0 happens right hmm? okay i did not say how why my equilibrium is zero in this case so if my x0 is less than equal to delta which is equal to epsilon over gamma e to the power m correct by this expression of the solution 
I know that x t is less than equal to norm x 0 gamma e to the power m. Yeah, everybody gets this, understands this, right? Why x 0 is, I am just breaking it into norms, therefore, there I get a less than equal to, right? First, I have the absolute value here and then when I take the separate pieces, then it becomes a less than equal to any way, right? Just by breaking the absolute value. I am just writing it as norm to be general. I know that this is x0, I retain it as such. This is gamma, retain it as such. This is exponential of this guy. But the largest value this guy can take is e to the power m. Yeah. So, just plug in for delta here. What happens? Less than e xt is less than equal to epsilon. Correct? If you plug in for this delta, in fact, this guy goes here, gamma e to the power m cancels. So, I just have xt is less than equal to epsilon. Yeah. So, I just proved it, proved whatever I needed that x, I wanted the states to remain inside the epsilon ball. Yeah. But notice very carefully that my delta depends on the initial time. Very important. Delta depends on my initial time. I can't change that. So, all I have proven is stability in the sense of Lyapunov not uniform stability in the sense of Lyapunov, okay? because my delta depends on initial time. Okay? Also remember that it depends on epsilon also. Hmm? That is what the picture I kept making. right? You give me a small epsilon ball, I will give you a small delta. If you give me a large epsilon ball, I will give you a large delta. Right? So, delta will sort of scale, in fact, linearly with epsilon in this particular case. Huh? It will scale linearly. Okay? So you cannot ignore this. Yeah, so not guaranteeing any boundedness. Hmm? Okay, great. So everybody is, I hope, convinced that this is stable. What about uniform stability? Hmm. Now I want this delta to make this delta independent of t zero. So that is the question I ask here. Can gamma be independent of t zero? Because that is the only delta t zero dependence, right? Nothing else depends on t zero only gamma. So, if I want to make delta independent of t0, I need to look for ways to make gamma independent of t0. Okay? Now, the important thing to understand is whenever I am trying to uh, find a common delta that is independent of t0, I have to hunt for the smallest delta. I hope this is sort of evident. Okay? For example, I mean I will just try to make a picture. So, Suppose I give you this epsilon ball okay? and then I give you some initial time. Corresponding to that, I give you a t0 and corresponding to that I have a delta ball. I would say this is delta ball. Okay? Now, if I give you another initial time t0 prime then i get a delta prime ball right corresponding to different initial conditions i get different uh, delta balls now the point is if i want a delta ball which works for both initial times for t0 and t0 prime, which ball will I choose? Huh? The smaller one, right? Obviously, right? Because I want to stay inside epsilon. So, it has to work for both times t0 and t0 prime. I have to choose the smaller ball. If I choose the larger ball, it will work for t0, but if I start at t0 prime, I am guaranteed to get out or uh, there is a potential that I get out of, not guaranteed, but there is a potential that I escape. Okay, so, I have to choose the smaller ball. So, if I extend this to all possible initial times, I have to find the smallest delta. Always, if I want to get uniformity, must find the smallest delta. Okay, so, that is what is mentioned here. Okay, so, I want to find the smallest possible delta, which means I want to find the largest possible gamma in this case. Right? Okay? Now, look at the expression for gamma. I have just copied it for your benefit here. 
what do, what do you see and it's written here but it's evident that it has the opposite behavior of the t expression right so this actually blows up goes to infinity in fact it will become positive after a certain time certain t0 and it will blow off to infinity because t0 square will dominate everything yeah so gamma t0 goes to infinity as t0 goes to infinity so there is no upper bound on gamma at all there is no largest gamma yeah because if i choose gamma t0 as infinity then my delta is zero so which is to not allowed right delta has to be positive basically you are giving no initial condition right so therefore no uniformity is possible in this case okay no uniformity is possible in this case because gamma is going to blow up all right and therefore it will not be uniformly stable you cannot achieve uniform stability in this case okay so that's uh, really the point so the system is stable but not uniformly stable okay so this is how um, you analyze these properties we'll talk about other properties in the upcoming class but this is sort of how you analyze the property you have to actually solve the system yeah you can imagine that this is not realistic yeah this is a very simple linear scalar system that i gave you and we did this bunch of pretty lengthy analysis to figure all this out uh, once we solved the system yeah you cannot expect that we are going to be able to solve most uh, non linear systems yeah? once i give you a vector system you will even a second order system you will struggle yeah? to get an analytical solution and any numerical answer is no answer yeah? don't try to ever give me numerical answers that i tried 100 initial conditions and uh, i got that this delta works <laughs> impossible not acceptable yeah because there may be that 101th example initial condition for which it will not work okay so numerical answers not okay which is why uh, subsequently not in the next lecture but subsequently we talk about the lyapunov theorems which are actually uh, better tests they are tests rather than just like you have convergence tests lyapunov theorems are tests yeah they are meant to uh give you easy conditions for doing this okay so not actually use these definitions which is virtually impossible okay just like the supremum definition cannot use it yeah i mean you can't just keep scanning to find supremum of a matrix so you have those simple formula here you have these lyapunov theorems okay which will form the basis of everything we do uh you know uh, in terms of design okay